Hello friends! In the last part of this mini-series we established the importance of having a reference point. We chose the tail of the T-Rex to be that reference point and implemented a scanner function to find it. Today we will implement functions which will make our prehistoric friends jump and dodge. We will also create a function which will update our bitmap and we will do some optimization to deal with the increasing speed of the game. You know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for reasons attack. We have three functions which will have to be executed in parallel as long as the bot is running. Those functions are scan for cacti and jump if they are getting close, scan for birds and dodge them, and last but not least, update the bitmap so that the scanners are scanning information which is as close to real time as possible. Since we want those functions to run simultaneously, we have to run them in different threads. This might sound hard if you have never done it before, but no worries, it's actually quite simple. Normally, your program has one thread called the main thread. Everything happens in order one after the other. But what we can do is start and manage additional threads. Let's say our main thread is the boss and he has some tasks which he has no time for. What he can do is hire an additional thread, let's call it slave1 and assign it a task. Now if that task is just some lines of code and then the task is done, that's no problem. The slave just does his work and when he's done he goes back to bothering his co-workers with irrelevant stories about his holidays or whatever. But in our case it's a bit more complicated. What we want is the slave to work until we tell him to stop. We can do this for instance by giving the slave a flag. It's just a bool variable which we pass by reference. As long as the value is true, the slave has to work. But since we pass the flag by reference, if the boss thread sets the value to false, the slave thread also sees that change and knows that he can stop. Alright, now that we know that, let's finally implement our first function which will be executed by one of the slave threads. Let's start with the updating of the bitmap first, because the other two functions depend on it. We already have the get bitmap function from our last time, so it's pretty simple stuff. We create a new function with all the same arguments as the get bitmap function and the additional flag passed by reference. As long as that flag is set to false, the function executes a loop inside which the get bitmap function is called. Let's not stress out the slave too much. He may sleep for 50 milliseconds between each update. But let's make sure that only this thread sleeps, not the whole program. To do this, we can include chrono as well as thread and put the slave to sleep like so. Alright, that's it for the function. Now in our main loop, inside the numpad3 if body, we can create the thread and make it start the function. One important thing here is that variables which are passed by reference have to be passed into the thread in this reference wrapper. Let's add another if statement to handle stopping the bot. In here we should stop the thread. So let's set the flag which we pass to the slave thread to true and call the thread method join. What this does is it waits for the slave to be finished before continuing. This is generally a good idea since it makes sure that the thread object can be safely destroyed afterwards. Like for instance when our program stops altogether. Alright, on to the next function, which is scanning for cacti and jumping. The way I went about this is scanning for the color of the cactus on a line somewhere to the right of the T-Rex. As we hopefully all know, a line can be defined by two points, the start and the end point. So let's create those two points. Finding the values for those points was a lot of trial and error, but here they are. And of course, the coordinates of those two points are relative to the tail of the T-Rex. Now let's create the function. Arguments are the exit flag, our reference point, which is the tail, the two points defining the line, the color of the cactus and a reference to our bitmap. Inside this function, we again have a while loop, which runs until the exit flag is true. And inside that, a for loop, which goes through the points on the line. As you can see, the x value is incremented by 4 in each step. This is because the cactus have a width of at least 4 points. The y coordinate stays the same because our line is parallel to the y axis. 
We get the color at each of those points on the line and if the color matches the color of the cactus, we want to jump. So let's create a function for pressing a key. All this is stuff I already covered in a previous video, but let me go through it real quickly. To press a key, we can call the send input function. This function takes an argument of type input. We call this function twice, once for pressing the key down and once for releasing the key. In between pressing and releasing, we wait some time. Okay, nice. Two functions done, one to go, which is dodging birds. As you can probably guess, this one is pretty similar to the last function. Only this time, we call the press key function we just created with a different parameter. And also, we have the length of the line we search within hardcoded in this case. No particular reason for this to be honest. It's just an alternative to the way we implemented it for the jumper. Back in our main loop, let's create the two new threads for our two new functions and also make those threads join before we wanna exit. Time to have a look at the result. It goes pretty well until the game speeds up. At some point the jumps are too long and our T-Rex goes extinct, just like his brothers. So what can we do to help him survive a bit longer? Well, it turns out that if you press the down arrow key, while he's in the air, he drops back down to the floor faster. Because screw physics, I guess. So let's break the law of physics, shall we? In our press key function, let's add another parameter, which is the key code for the second key, which shall be pressed after the first one. If that parameter is not null, let's press that key. Also, let's make the time between the key down and key up of the first key a parameter. So we can decide after how much time we want to start increasing gravity. Now we also have to change the jumper function a bit. We have two new parameters which we pass by reference and we add those parameters to the press key function we call. In our main loop we need a way to know how far in the game we are. I did this simply by adding a timer. So we initialize start and end time which are initially the same. Then we get the current difference between the two in milliseconds. Whenever that time becomes larger than 10,000, there are quite a few things to do. Why every 10 seconds? Because this is how long it roughly takes to gain 100 points in the game and the game speed increases. First up, we want to have a counter for how often this happens. Then we want to change the location of the line where we are searching for the cacti and birds. A bit to the right, to kind of compensate for the speed up. And of course, we want to reset the timer. After three counter increases, meaning after 30 seconds, we want to start increasing gravity by pressing the down key after jumping. After nine speed ups, we want to decrease the amount of time before we start pressing the down key. And the same after 11 speed ups. Maybe you wonder how I came up with these numbers. Well, let's just say I got a bit obsessive wanting to get as high of a score as possible. So basically a lot of trial and error, killing many generations of T-Rex while increasing the survival time. It's all for the greater good. Okay, with all those improvements in place, the T-Rex definitely does way better at the game than I ever could. And that's it for this video, my friends. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did helps my ego and also the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing if you want to see more game hacking related stuff. Until next time friends, talk to you soon.